Oh, we've had a fairly disruptive week, mate. You know, we've had two COVID uh, positives. We had a uh, young prop come in on Thursday at one training run, got promoted to starting guy. Uh, we lost Jamie at half time, Jamie George at half time. Uh, Carl Singler got a bad uh, dead leg early in the first half. So we had to battle today. You know, we had to battle really hard. And I was really pleased with the attitude of the players. Because it wasn't as we, – we predicted probably it was going to be more of a free-flowing game like Australia liked to play. Um, but it turned out to be, you know, a heavy penalty game, a lot of set-piece contests, a lot of kicking. And I was pleased the way we adapted our game and fought through it. And also really pleased the way our finishers finished the game. You played some really lovely stuff at times, thinking about the first try, um, three or four times you could have scored a game. Why do you think the game, though, got a, got a bit scruffy? Oh, uh, well, sometimes it goes like that, mate. You know, we got a uh, we got a couple of penalties in that when we had possession. When you get penalties when you have possession, particularly for sealing off, it tends to disrupt the flow of your attack, and, and that's what happened today. Um, yeah, there was no lack of intent. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure, mate. If we knew, we'd... We'd all be able to play a perfect game, but we don't. Uh, and Owen, how how are how are you after after coming off in the second half? I'm okay. I just I got a bang on the ankle, um, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it turns up tomorrow. But it feels alright. But but no concerns about next week. Uh, not the moment. We we'll see where it goes. Cool. And just one more from me, Eddie. Um, any individuals particularly stand out for you today? Uh Bevan Rod, mate. Yeah, to make his debut uh, against the bloke who's played 113 caps and play 60, 65, 70 minutes, whatever he played, um, is a remarkable effort from a young man. You know, he's a young prop. Um, as I said, only had one training run with us. I thought he he adapted well. And then Jamie Vermeer, you know, who's, who's a, a young hooker, but we've identified we think he can he can he can make a really good test hooker and uh I think he set a record for scoring a try in his first four tests. He's got that sense for the ball. He's got a bit of work to do on his set piece, like most young hookers do. But those two guys I think were really outstanding. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chris. James Cole, please. Hi Chris, Jamie Cole here. Eddie, what did you make of the Smith Owen Farrell partnership? Yeah, well, they're a bit like, you know, two opening batsmen who haven't batted together facing the new ball for the first time. Uh, every time they bat together, uh, after this, they'll be better. But, yeah, I thought the first try we scored is probably one of the best tries I've seen from an England side. You know, our handling, our running lines, hitting the holes was absolutely outstanding. And we want to do more of that, and we're aggressive about wanting to do more. But it's just not going to happen all the time. Um but I thought, yeah, really promising from those two guys. And you see that as, as a partnership for the long term going forward? Do they complement each other well? Oh, look, we think so. But, you know, they've both got to get picked, mate. You know, the competition in this squad is red hot. We've got 34 players competing for 23 spots. And, and we know Owen's a good player. You know, he's played, I think that was his 100th all-round test, uh, if you include the Lions. Um, and he's getting close to 100 for England. So we know he's a bloody good player. We know Smith's going to be a good player if he keeps working hard. And how is Jamie George? What chance of him being fit for next week? Yeah, he got a fair whack on his knee. Um, you know, he's a tough guy, and to come off at half time would make it uh, not impossible. Nothing's impossible, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see, mate. Does he need a, does he need a scan? Oh, they all need scans, mate. Yeah, you slip over in the bathroom, now you need a scan. And um, just in terms of Joe Marler, he comes out of isolation Thursday, I think. Does that rule him out of next week? Uh, no, not at all, mate. He sent me a photo today. He's, he's eating very healthy wraps. I think he was trying to send a message that he's he's preparing for the game and, uh, yeah, we know what Joe can do, so he'll be, he'll be a, a possibility for us. And with South Africa and the physicality, are you tend to call up another front row, or are you happy with, with what you got? Uh, look, we'll just uh, see what the lay of the land is tonight, mate, and then we'll 
work out what we need to do going forward. Thanks, James. Is that you, Doctor? Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, one more. I, I'm struggling with my sausage fingers. Um, just on South Africa, a repeat of the World Cup final, a chance for revenge. Do you see it like that at all? Well, that's a nice media line, um, but they're a different team now. We're a different team. They're the World Cup champions. We're not. Um, you know, and it's it's going to be important tests against two very good teams to finish off the autumn. Want to finish off the autumn well? It's the final game of the autumn, so we're looking at it as a as a final, um, and we want to take them on. We're going to have to play a little bit differently against them to beat them. Um, and we'll start preparing that on Monday lunchtime. Thanks, James. Will Kelleher, please. Hi, Eddie. Um, Freddie Stewart was the official man of the match. Aside from the try that he scored, what's impressed you about the, his first few caps? Uh, he's got a good head on him, mate. Uh, wants to improve, communicate well to the players around him. Uh, he's got a good awareness of where the ball is and where his support players are. And he's brave in the air, mate. You know, I haven't seen an England fullback like him since Mike Brown that's courageous in the air like him. You know, he claims every ball. And he's only a young kid, mate. I can ask you too about Courtney Laws. And he's always been a strong player for England, but it seems like he's adding to his repertoire with the, the passing that he's managing to put away here. There was a couple of really good ones in the game today. Yeah, I think he's developing his play. You know, he's, he's really committed to be the best player he can over the next two years. He's obviously getting to the end of his career, but he wants to be part of this side game of the World Cup and and he's he's working on his game to keep improving. And, you know, again, I thought he put in a, a good performance today. Um, you know, the senior guys today had to dig deep because they didn't have too much support around them. You know, they, you look at how young the team was, uh, particularly at the end, those senior guys played a really key role for us. Your own personal record is now 8-0 against Australia. Does it ever get old for you? Uh, well, I don't look at it as personal. Um, you know, for us today, it was a, a chance to get a little bit better. I'm, I'm pleased we got a little bit better today and we know we're going to have to get a little bit better next week. So the personal stuff's uh, not really a concern for me, mate. Thanks, Will. Alex Lowe, please. Um, hello, Owen. Uh, just a question for you, please, on, on your partnership with Marcus, but also further out um, with Henry Slade spending a lot of the game at 15, that, that sort of malleable back line with people popping up in, in different roles. Can, can you just give us your, your thoughts on, on how you felt it went really with, uh, with his first outing? Yeah, um, it, I mean, it felt it felt okay. It felt comfortable. I think we'd have, we'd have liked to uh, get our hands on the ball a bit more. And, and be able and be able to play, but it's just as Eddie said, it was a, it was how the game went, um, and we've we've done a lot of good work in training this week, and, and hopefully we continue to get better. And uh, next week we'll see what happens. And Eddie, just on on your selection of Manu in the fourteen jersey, but he, he seems to spend most of the game in a pretty familiar position um, with Henry at fifteen, where he's played before. Was that the plan, or was that how it how, how it turned out? Oh, no, we were always going to mix and match, and I said that when when we announced the team. But unfortunately, we've got to put fixed numbers on their back. You know, I, I'd prefer in rugby if we went to the, the basketball system where the players could pick a number at the start of the year, and that's your number. Um, because the, even, even if you put them in their traditional numbers, it's very rarely that a 12 passes to a 13 that passes to the winger. You know, the combinations are all different. The games become a lot more fluid and and transitional, as you saw today, you know, we had a strong set-piece contest, but then there was a lot of transitional play where players have got to find their position, find find their support in relation to another player. So the numbers, you know, is fairly archaic, I think. Thanks, Alex. Um, we will finish up with James Wilde and then Christy Doran. Thank you. James, please. Owen, it seems like you're having a lot of fun out there. It's a very simple thing, but you're putting the smile on your face. What do you put that down to? Oh, uh, me personally, do you mean? The team, mate. Our team. Um, well, we um, we love being back here at Twickenham. We love uh, playing in front of our of our crowd. We're enjoying what we're doing. We have a good feeling within the camp. Um, the group's the group's been doing a lot of work 
together. Uh, and that's and that's not just the starting 15 or, or the 23, that's that's the whole squad. Um, so there's a there's a good feeling amongst the group at the minute, and and these lads love playing for England. Um, and I and I hope that shows on the field, yeah. Very much so. How are you going to take that into next week? Continue that fun. Well, we've got to improve. Um, we want to we want to make sure that we're we're better next week. And um, everybody everybody wants to get better. Everybody wants to improve week on week, and, and we'll have to make sure of that um, playing against South Africa. Uh, and we'll attack that during the week. We'll we'll get after it. We'll make sure that we don't try and wait for it to happen. We'll uh, we'll make sure that we're the ones getting after it, and that that'll be enjoyable. Hi, Eddie. Congratulations. Um, Shilt Barnes said in a column just the other day that Australia is more likely to win a World Cup than against England uh, this afternoon, given the injuries, given those that were missing. Can you just give us an assessment on, on where you think the Wallabies are at? Um, thank you. Yeah, well, I think they're going in the right direction, mate. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's important for world rugby that we have a strong Wallabies. I think Dave Rennie's done a good job. He's, he's brought a lot of players through. Uh, it's a difficult time for them at the moment. They've been in the bubble a long time. And they've got a show, got a show fight, which they did today. They hung in there. Um, we were just a little bit too strong from the last 20. But if you look at what's ahead of Australian rugby, you know, they've got the World Cup in 2023 in France. Dave Rennie's doing a good job. They've got the Lions in 2025. I think they've been promised or there's probably a handshake there somewhere along the line that they'll get the World Cup in 2027. Um, and so they've got a lot to look forward to, mate. And and the Australian sporting environment needs a strong Wallabies as the world the world in world rugby environment needs it. So really positive. And, yeah, I, I think they should be proud of their efforts today given the circumstances they've been in. You know, I was talking to one of the staff that I that I know quite well. He hasn't seen his family for four months um, because of the, the COVID situation. So that's tough for those guys. Um, so we should be, um, you know, very uh, grateful that they've come up here and they've, and they've done this tour to keep, keep world rugby going. Thank you.